We are currently at Belsay Hall, which is a, a grecian styled mansion and medieval castle and quarry gardens, but we're here for the legendary joust. We are. We are. This is Belsay Hall which is the Grecian styled mansion. But we're not gonna look at that just yet. We're gonna head round the back to the castle because that's where the event has taken place. We're gonna go through the gardens though. So we'll show you some of the pretty gardens on the way to the castle. I'm supervising the child playing in the sand pit. I'm, making, I'm gonna make it a little turret. You're making a turret? Yeah. Having fun there, you big kid. <laughs> Well done, you're clever. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. So you have to go over the grass. Are you wheelchair? Not down the stairways. It's very pretty and green. I belong, I belong to you. Do just what you want. to the castle through the quarry gardens and now we just need to wait for the jousting first job's to grab a drink because we're thirsty from that walk through the quarry here you are <laughs> yeah and then a burger <laughs> caroline's got a vegan chili nachos any good not, not the, I can't really taste the great deal of but it's fine. Okay, and I've got my burger. And we are waiting for the joust to start. The horses are over there with the knight. introduce you to our legendary jousters on the field this afternoon closest to you in the gold and the green riding Zogo we have the wild man next to him in the black and the orange the wyvern wyvern's horse is Neville in the middle there in the red and white, Sir Lancelot and Charlemagne. And in the gold, on Icaro, Jason of the Argonauts. Jason of the Wild Man. We have a splintered lance from Jason of the Argonauts. One point. And Jason is not taking any prisoners, he's off again! Give him a cheer in the wild man! Now that was a touch! 
I don't think I'm going to award that because the lance didn't shatter. But they're going again. Cheer them on, cheer them on. Can you see how hard it is? The horses just stuck out at the last moment. And in all of that armor, completely coated in mail, chain mail as you may know it, covering the arms. Covering the arms and the legs and the torso, the helmet, severely restricting the vision uh, of the knights there. Oh, a good strike, wild man, to Sir Lancelot, did you hear that? Obviously we're wowing you into submission. Do give them a cheer, should you feel like it? Oh, very close, excellent horsemanship there, sirs. The horse is wheeling and spinning around, as I mentioned to you. This is where the word tournament came from, the tournay. Jason of the Argonauts is just dodging out of everybody's way. This is the thing. Deal the blow, but don't take one yourself. Oh, and another broken lance. Jason of the Argonauts. because of the sound of the sword on sword. Now these horses are highly skilled and have been highly trained, so they do have some moves to get away from one another or to wheel around one another. It's just in incredibly intricate. Wild Man and Jason of the Argonauts ably demonstrating the melee. Showing you what will happen and Sir Lancelot is coming in as well. So how about you cheer on your favorite knight? Is it Sir Lancelot? Is it the Wild Man? Yay! Or Jason of the Argonauts? Jason of the Argonauts is coming in! So let us start the melee proper! We will watch and see who demonstrates the most skill and prowess and at the end of each bout we will name the victor. The horse is wheeling and whirling around one another. Jason of the Argonauts desperately trying to get away there. Sir Lancelot protecting his back with his uh, sword there. But he's coming in anyway, smashing to the back of the shield. Gentlemen, time! Hold your horses! The victor. So, please, after three, shout out who you want to win and to have the final flag uh, awarded for this part of the joust. After three, one, two, three! I can just hear Wild Man quite a lot. The jousting, that was good fun to watch. It was. And the Sean picked Sir Lancelot and I picked Jason of the Argonauts, who came second, yours is Norway. Yeah. Um, I always thought jousting was like a fight, and uh, but no, it's not. It's just practice warfare for when they go into battle. It's, uh, and it would have hundreds of horses, and it would be over massive distances. I always thought it was like a short thing, and it was 
like winner takes all and to the death and all that kind of stuff, but no, that's not what jousting is about. Oh, there's so many different forms of jousting, all different type of kind of melees and things, all sorts. Yeah, but it was all about just getting the army ready to practice for war. Which is all making it a game and, and getting the practice in, so that's good fun. Um, we're going to have a look around the castle now. We are. We are. But maybe I might shoot the crossbow. Before everybody else does. <laughs> so you can see lots of old things and knickknacks to buy here. A weird tree. And we can't do the crossbow. And there's also, we're going to have a look at that in a minute after we've been in the castle, which is the, uh, the dawn of chivalry. Just had a look around the castle. Caroline like, could only see a little bit of it because obviously there's steps and winding staircases and all, all that business in the old buildings. Yeah. But it's pretty. Very small castle, pretty enough. But I've seen better. Oh, I've, I've seen much better, but that's, mm. obviously it's a very old castle which is getting depleted. It's medieval. It's nice. We're going to head over to the hall now and have a look in there. Mm. I belong, I belong to you. I belong, I belong to you. and walk it is up the especially hills and through, the, through the woods and down the quarry especially when you're pushing you think me I've been working hard <laughs> we're nearly at the hall we are we are but it is very peaceful apart from when dogs bark <laughs> it's very pretty or when Sean hiccups, when Sean hiccups yeah so pretty they even have little plaques for all the different types of plants trees Smile, Caroline. I'd rather not learn how to be a Victorian servant when <laughs> she already slaves me as it is. <laughs> We've found a map. So this is where we are now. We're in here. And that's where we came in. So we came in through the drive, all around here, and then in there, and that's the stables. This is Belsay Hall. And then we walked all the way through all of this to the castle. From castle to country house, the Belsay estate. 700 years the Middleton family have lived here. Is that the Middletons? No, it can't be. 
No, they live down south, don't they? Well, actually, I'm not, I'm not sure, but I'm sure some of the middle ones may be from this Yeah, I mean, it's obviously the Middleton family, but is it the Middleton family? Sir Charles it's Monk. It's a 30 acre, um, or 12 hectare, hectare, is it? Hector. Whatever it is. Hector. Hector? Hector? Hector. I know it's 30 acres of ground. The Grecian style of it was brought about by Sir Charles Monk between 1807 and 1817. It looks like a grand man. During the Second World War, what happened? The army took it over. The army took it over. And in 1980, Stephen Middleton, Middleton gave it to English Heritage. Ah. So it's got a lot of history attached to it. It had changing fortunes, as they say. So this is the tea room. Here we go. And this is to the hall. Oh, it's the right one. Take it out. You've got to use your radar key to get through the secret entrance to the hall. If you're in the wheelchair. Kids are loving the echoes. This part of the hall was Sir Charles Monk's study, which is a pretty impressive room with a view. Had lots of dry rot in, in here. Sir Charles Monk had a little safe room off the side, which was here. Caroline's just reading all the information. Yeah. Um, also, along here were all of the servants. Yeah, it's a special... Servants hall and servants and guest rooms on the upper, floor, upper floors. And you can see, if you look all the way up there, you can see the roof and the staircases and all of the rot and, and mould and all the rest of it. It ends up with dry rot and it goes right down into the roof. Yeah, and, and Sir Stephen Middleton said he didn't want anything recreated, he just wanted it saved and the architecture of the hall so, itself to speak for itself because yes, it's, it's often see. used for art exhibitions and things as well so you'd have art in the various rooms but we're going to keep looking around the house i'm just going to have a look down in the cellar oh it's cold down here perfect for storing things i don't know these are just cellars or oh, maybe where they kept the animals more toilets? I don't, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure. There's no sign to tell me. You wouldn't get animals down here, down the steep stairs. It's scary down here in the dark. It's got to be storage down here, right? This room is the largest room in the hall. It was the library, but also the entertaining room. Would have been called a saloon in years gone by, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'm it, saying it's meant to make it look romantic. Yeah, it would be impressive. Yeah. This room is the dining room, but it was originally the drawing room, but it was swapped around a long time ago, and it became the dining room. Mm. And I actually love the fireplace. Yeah, and the hall. I know it's a bit ruined, but you can imagine what it was originally. This was the Great Hall, which is <laughs> impressive. On the first floor, this would have been one of the bedrooms. Look at that wallpaper. And then this would have been 
another bedroom. All with their own fireplaces. I don't know if I like that wallpaper. Out under the Great Hall. And another bedroom. This one's more my style. And another bedroom. Look at the views from this bedroom. Wow. And then if we look at this window. So there's another bedroom. This house has got an unusual layout of bedrooms. It's got a large one in the middle with small bedrooms either side that interconnect which is unusual for this style of house but it was tailored for Sir Charles Monk's family's needs so obviously they've got electrics in later on here's another bedroom, lots of bedrooms Ooh. a good fun afternoon at Belsay Hall. We'll definitely come back when there's another event on here I think. Yeah, definitely. There's, there's always lots going on at Belsay Hall in and the I garden. I think I'll get King Dave to bring me and do the proper tour because I was sitting there listening while Sean was upstairs to the tour and it was actually really interesting. Yeah. I learned a lot actually. In that. You learned that? Um... I learned that so, um, Charles Dobson was involved in doing the pillars, the Grecian pillars, with uh, one of the Middletons. John Dobson do you mean? Yeah, did I say Charles? Yeah. No, it was Charles Dobson it said. Charles Dobson. Charles Dobson, I'm was sure it said. Was it not John Dobson from John Dobson Street? No, I'm sure it was. It no, it said Charles Who Dobson. Who architected much of Newcastle. No, it was written down In Charles. In that style. It was written down Charles Dobson. All right then. Anyway, so, but they were done on a Christian temple. I learned that the government told them they had to give the house to them during the war. Um, and that when they give it to them, the rooms that were the servants weren't well maintained. So by the time they got it back from the army and the forces, it was the British army and the... American Army, by the time they got it back, it was just too expensive to maintain. So Stephen Middleton um, decided to go and live on the, pro on the property, in the grounds, but not in the house. So the house got just left. English Heritage come along and said, right, okay, can we take guardianship of it? So they've maintained the stables, the house, the hall, and the rest of the family still live on the grounds. Cool. Well, that's going to do it for Belsay Hall. So keep making memories. Catch you later. I can't see the trees for the wood, Sean. <laughs> <laughs>